Hi, VancouverWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Friday, September 2nd. Hurricane Hermine came ashore last night in the Panhandle region of Florida as a Category 1 hurricane. That was the first official hurricane to reach the shores of Florida since Wilma did back in October of 2005. It ended an unprecedented streak of a hurricane drought in the state of Florida in the record-keeping era that goes all the way back into the uh, middle 1800s. The storm has been downgraded uh, in the overnight hours to a tropical storm status. It still has maximum sustained winds of 60 miles per hour, moving north to northeast at about 14 miles per hour, and it will become a major problem for the coastal region of the Mid-Atlantic region later this weekend and into the early part of next week, all the way from Long Island down to the coastal region of Virginia, including the Delmarva Peninsula and New Jersey coastal regions, a major impact coming from this uh, storm. The big problem is it will uh, stall out as it moves to a position off the Mid-Atlantic coastline and could have an impact just pound away at the Mid-Atlantic coastline Sunday, Monday, even into Tuesday for a few days. It will be a strong system, perhaps uh, regaining strength once it moves back out over the waters into hurricane status. Whether they officially call it a hurricane or an extratropical system is uh, really irrelevant. It will have a major impact on the coastline of the Mid-Atlantic region. This is the latest infrared, colorized infrared satellite imagery loop from the Penn State Ewald site. Here is the center of a tropical storm Hermine this morning in the southern part of Georgia. It will continue to push to the north and east, uh, pretty close to the coastline of the Carolinas, and then on out to sea near the Virginia-North Carolina border. That by no means will be the end of the story, however. It will perhaps regain some strength over some very warm uh, waters of, off the Mid-Atlantic coastline and then slow down to a grinding halt off the Mid-Atlantic coastline in the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday time frame. Well, here's the latest official forecast track and the cone of probability for the movement of this storm by NOAA's National Hurricane Center. In general, in general I think it's a good uh, a forecast track here. Here again is where a tropical storm exists this morning. It will ride up to the north and east. And then at this point in time, it begins to get influenced by building high pressure to the north over in the uh, uh, northeastern part of the country. It'll shift from a more northeasterly direction to a northerly direction, move up into this region, perhaps I'm a little bit west of the official storm track, uh, and then basically sit and spin here. Whether it actually loops back over land, that still remains to be seen. There is an outside chance that it could actually loop back in or back into the coastline. Uh, but the big story is it will stall out in this region right here as a powerful storm, perhaps even hurricane status one or even on an outside chance hurricane status two, and sit here and spin for a couple of days, uh, mainly in the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday time frame. This entire region from the Long Island down to southeastern Virginia will just be pounded by this storm uh, pretty much hour after hour for a few days. Coastal flooding is a serious concern here and of course lots of rain and wind uh, from this system that again will stall out as a powerful storm over some very warm waters off the mid-Atlantic coastline. Well it's often useful to go back in time and look at analogs that uh, could give some insight as to what could possibly happen for a situation like this and this is the Hurricane uh, Agnes track from June of 1972. That produced some historic flooding over the state of Pennsylvania. But the track has some similarities to what I, I expect here for Hermine. Came out of the Gulf of Mexico as a hurricane, a Category 1 hurricane, slammed into the panhandle of Florida as Hermine did last night, moved to the north and east, and then uh, actually was downgraded to a tropical depression in this region right here where there are light blues and then increased in strength once it reached the mid-Atlantic coastline and moved off the coast and it really stalled out, slowed down and basically moved into northeastern Pennsylvania and dissipated there after stalling out and because of the slow movement it caused uh, a lot of flooding. I don't expect that in the state of Pennsylvania but certainly 
can be some serious flooding problems closer to the coastline here. But again, some similarities to Hurricane Agnes back in June of 1972 to what we expect to be the track of Hermine here over the next few days. Out of the Gulf of Mexico, along the Carolina coastline, then off the Mid-Atlantic coastline, slowing down and perhaps regaining some strength to affect the uh, Mid-Atlantic coastline. Well, these are the actual sea surface temperatures uh, right now, very much above normal off the Mid-Atlantic coastline. But again, these are not the anomalies, just the actual temperatures. And notice this warm tongue right in this region right here. 27 degrees Celsius water temperatures right in here. In uh, some uh, cases, it's not that different than what you see in the Gulf of Mexico and off the uh, southeast U.S. coast. This is a, a big a concern right here because once that storm pushes back out over the waters here off the uh, North Carolina-Virginia border region here, it will be sitting on top of some very warm water for a couple of days as it will slow down thanks again to very strong high pressure that will be building to the north across southeastern Canada and the northeast US. So some very warm anomalously warm uh, water temperatures off the middle mid-Atlantic coastline will help this system regain some strength as it slows down later this week and into the early part of next week. Well, let's take a look at a couple co uh, computer forecast models for this particular system. This is the 24-hour forecast from last night's Zero-Z GFS model run from the Tropical Tidbits website. By this evening, Friday evening, it is predicting that storm right along the South Carolina coastline here. Uh, 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 again, high pressure playing a big role moving in across the southeastern part of Canada into New England. That is uh, one of the main players over the next 72 hours or so. Let's just jump ahead here into uh, another 24 hours later. This is the forecast map right here for uh, Saturday evening. That storm does push off the coastline here. In some cases, it looks like, in some scenarios, it looks like it would be harmless moving out to sea, but not in this particular a scenario. Again, this is sitting over some very warm waters at this time. This is the Saturday evening forecast map. Now let's jump out another 24 hours here. And here we go. This is the, uh, the big problem here. It slows down. It could regain some strength at this time. This is the Sunday evening forecast map. Just some powerful winds from Long Island down along the Jersey coastline, the Delmarva Peninsula, all the way into southeast of Virginia. The rain and wind can back up into Philadelphia, for example, even into the D.C. metro region. Should not be a major problem in the immediate I-95 corridor. This is the biggest problem from this system will be along the coastline. The closer you get to the coast, the more the rain and the wind. Let's jump out another 24 hours. And here we go. This is Monday evening. It's still just sitting there and spinning as a powerful storm off the middle Atlantic coastline. Coastal flooding is a potential big problem, again, all the way from Long Island down to Virginia. Strong winds continue. Let's finally go out another 24 hours. And here we are on Tuesday evening. That storm still just sitting and spinning. 150 miles or so off the mid-Atlantic coastline, still some strong winds all the way back into the I-95 car, by the way. Uh, again, the big problem here is a strong high pressure moving to the north that will slow the system down, and it will just sit and spin for a few days here over some very warm waters off the mid-Atlantic coastline. Well, let's take a look at last night's European model run. This, too, is from the Tropical Tidbits website. This is a 24-hour forecast map for this evening, Friday evening. Similar to the GFS, it has the uh, storm not far from the South Carolina coastline. Let's now jump out another 24 hours. And here we go by tomorrow night, Saturday evening, sitting and spinning off the uh, mid-Atlantic coastline. Uh, it's grinding down to a, a real uh, halt here at this point particular stage and again it could very well regain some strength once it pushes back out over the waters another 24 hours there it is a strong storm here and this is uh, now Sunday evening here very strong storm sitting just a couple hundred miles off the mid-Atlantic coastline another 24 hours just sitting there and spinning spinning this is Monday evening 
and Tuesday evening just sitting there and spinning off the mid Atlantic coastline. So both of these models suggest the storm pushes off the, the uh, coast around the North Carolina Virginia border region, moves out over those very warm waters of the mid Atlantic coastline, slows down to a pretty much a grinding halt off the mid Atlantic coastline and will pound away at the coast for hour after hour from Sunday into Monday even into Tuesday. Hence the big concern for some uh, serious coastal flooding later this weekend and the early part of next week. One final couple of maps I want to show here. This is from StormSurf.com and uh, it has a prediction for the wave heights at buoy locations. And here, this is the one I want to take a look at here, 44009. This is uh, just south of Cape May and uh, the forecast for the wave heights will show right now. And here it is. This is the forecast, again, from StormSurf.com for that buoy off Cape May, New Jersey here, all the way up to 26 feet here. This is by around Labor Day, the September 5th time period. So it certainly looks like there can be some uh, very high waves developing in this long period of uh, uh, strong winds here, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So again, Hermine, tropical storm status right now, will push off the coastline over the next 24 to 36 hours or so and then slow down as it spins over some very warm waters off the mid-Atlantic coastline. An extended period of strong winds and heavy rain at the coast, very likely to have some serious coastal flooding problems from Long Island all the way down into southeastern Virginia. Stay tuned to VencorWeather.com for updates. Uh, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.